board was informed that the decision was was inadvertently made wrong at the time, for the lack of a better word. In that, to correct me if I'm wrong, there was a group you were chairing in that meeting in my absence that night. The uh, yeah, we we were we were informed subsequently that <coughs> the the decision had a technical defect. Right. Um, in that the amount of votes <laughs> needed to carry the applicant's petition was um, incorrect. Right. And, and so we've I since had- that night, we had only four members. Four members present. And I have read, and actually I'll just insert right now, I have gone ahead and signed the certification in regards to the Mullen Law. And that in short says that I have reviewed the tape and I am uh, now capable of voting on that particular, on this particular case. And I believe we checked the town council and they, everything is okay in that, that regard. Yes, sir. Uh, and that night, if I'm not mistaken, after reviewing the tape and, and, and as such, the vote was three to one in regards to approving the permit. Subsequently, after that, we found out, or the board found out, we had been, uh, uh, I, I won't say, we took the reading of chapter 40A wrong in that we had thought that it required a three to one on a special permit and subsequently it was pointed out to us that no four to one is required or a, a four member four. So that night it would have been, had, would have had to have been unanimous and somebody is uh, missing, which is a four member board. Uh, so we're here tonight <coughs> to correct that night's decision because uh, we voted three to one to approve it and we couldn't do that. The law requires you to have uh, at least four votes to approve. So it was three to one to approve. It should have been three to one to not approve at that particular time. So we, it's, it's a, it's a invalid vote that night. So we're here to reconsider it tonight and I think that's all we're here to do. We don't need to uh, hear the case again, hear evidence, open it up for a public hearing or anything like that. Uh, everybody's familiar with what happened there uh, that night. Uh, and that's just the basics right now is we have a five member board here tonight that's gonna vote on this and uh, we will need <coughs> four members to approve, four members for the special permit to approve that special permit, at can, least. Can I make a suggestion yes, procedurally David. on how we move forward? Yes. Um, one of the members who approved, who voted in the affirmative in the original vote would make a motion to reconsider that vote. Yes, I will be the looking for a motion to reconsider the vote, the, yes. The I board will it. then vote on the motion to reconsider, which only requires a simple majority. Okay. <laughs> Three out of five. Yes. Presuming that carries, then I would suggest that Cy, as the original moving <coughs> member, restate agree. the original motion as or as close to as the way you. Really want me to you remember you <laughs> we did well. We did it well. No, as close as you know. Yeah. Well, you've already done it twice because I made you because I because I <laughs> had, had we had to do it twice that night. You're right. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then uh, following your second, uh, if the board members, I would imagine, have any further discussion, uh, particularly yourself, right. Robert, as having not right. been here that right. night. Well, I will, uh, I will. Board members would discuss the seconded motion uh, that Cy makes and then and then we would we would vote. Yes. All right? Yes. That that sound fair to everybody? Particularly you, Mr. Chairman. Usually, that's that's okay. the way we should tackle this. We should okay. make a motion okay. uh, uh, to be done by the board. Without further ado, okay. <laughs> I move that the board reconsider uh, the vote held on April 16, 2015, in case 15-04, to correct the procedural defect. Do I hear a second on that? Second. I have a second. 
Uh, any further discussion? Is this under the uh, uh, the recommendation of uh, town council? We are reconvening tonight at the recommendation of town council. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's that's just yeah, basically, basically what, what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And the procedure we're following is somewhat close to, or pretty darn close to the recommendation that we got from town council. Okay, so we have a motion and a second uh, to reconsider the decision from uh, on case number 15-04 that was taken on April 16, 2015. If there is no further discussion, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of reconsideration uh, of that vote, raise your hand. Okay, as the records show, it's 5-0-0 zero, zero in favor of reconsideration of the original of the vote taken on April 16th. Okay, so now we will proceed into that, and uh, I will take a motion. I guess this is what we should do now, is we will take a motion uh, on the uh, approval, for the approval of a special permit uh, on case number 15-04 for a, uh, an accessory apartment uh, at... Uh, at 181 South Street, Reading, Massachusetts, uh, under on the petition of uh, Thomas F. Wise. Uh, I'll take that motion. I would make that motion to grant the petitioner, Thomas F. Wise, a special permit under section 5.3.2, 5.4.7.2, and 5.4.7.3. That's the zoning bylaws. In order to make alterations, construct in addition to an existing fam single family dwelling and create an accessory apartment on the property located at 181 South Street in Redding. Uh, the alterations and additions to the existing family, single family dwelling and the creation of an accessory apartment will be in accordance with a plot plan dated February 12, 2014, prepared by Bowditch and Crandall, Incorporated, 8 Fort Street in Belmont, and certified by John W. McEachern, professional land surveyor, and as depicted on architectural drawings sheets A1 through A11, prepared by Miller Design LLC, 53 Statler Road in Belmont. Uh, special permit would be conditioned on the following. Petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuing of issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit and as-built plans showing the completed construction of the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Thank you, sir. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. I have a second over here from Eric. Thank you. Uh, further comments <coughs> on this? John. Uh, go ahead. Well, <coughs> as I um, previously had voted, um, I believe again that the uh, proposed accessory apartment does not meet all the qualifications for 5473, uh, namely Part A, uh, that the accessory apartment shall be a complete separate housekeeping unit containing both kitchen and bath. The basic Part of that is that the base, the accessory apartment shall be a complete separate housekeeping unit, which it does not appear to, or at least the petitioner has uh, not indicated that this is the case, uh, because there is shared space within um, the unit. That is, the new proposed house, as it is completed, will contain spaces that are shared by both the proposed occupant uh, which is the wife's family, and that second um, unit, um, which is not a complete 
separate, <coughs> separate and distinct housekeeping unit. So that's my, my biggest concern. Um, and I, I had only, if it's appropriate, had only one question for the petitioner. Um, would you rent out this unit? Would I rent out? Uh, at the time, my, for my no, 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 no. I mean, in the future, would you rent this unit out? As it, as it appears on your proposal. I hadn't considered whether I would rent it out or not. I mean, if both the in-laws were to pass away, it very well could be rented out, or it could be where my one of my kids comes back from college and they could use it as a separate and distinct. On, on your point, while you didn't ask it in particular, I had been thinking about that question for quite some time afterwards. And the only parallel I can draw is a hotel room where there's adjoining rooms. They, they rent them as separate and distinct rooms, but you can lock the door on both sides. And they are separate and distinct units. And that's, that's, a, that's the intention here, is that we want the ability as a family to be able to share space, but the door, there is a clear door in between those two, can be locked on both sides. And therefore, you can apply separate and distinct because there's a kitchen, there's a bath, and there's a bedroom and a living room. <coughs> well, my, my point would be that uh, if you're going to rent out this, uh, rent this p potentially rent it out, then um, you would have to put um, two means of egress in there, meet the standards of the uh, mass building codes, and and also uh, to meet, in my mind, um, uh, section uh, A of uh, 5.4.7.3. Yep. Um, and if if that's right now, to me, um, an in-law unit, an in-law apartment. Um, there's no descriptive definition or whatever in there, so when you start ta start talking about sharing the aspects of it, you don't have a distinct unit. So <clears throat> the accessory apartment only applies to or defined by um, a part A through part K of uh, five four seven three. Um, so this is what I keep coming back to. I mean, if you were not going to rent it out, um, but you still want to call it an accessory apartment, then um, I would propose an additional condition to the uh, motion that was made. And that condition would be that um, this unit or this space that you have described as the accessory apartment shall not or will not be rented as an excess as a distinct separate unit until it appears back before this board. I'd accept that condition. I have no intention of renting it anytime soon. I accept that condition. The intention has always been, as I've stated for the last two years unfortunately, mm -hmm. the intention has always been for the in-laws to be able to live there as they age and as other reasons as we've talked about in the past. So I have no intention, and I even volunteered that to my neighbors in the past. If you want me to, I'll put a stipulation on that we don't rent it unless we come back before here, because I have no intention of renting it. Um, could I, theoretically, 20 years from now, when they both pass, want to rent it? Yes, but at that point in time, it's reasonable to say, all right, let's go back and talk about it now. Because, yeah, there may be other changes that need to be done. We hope, if we can, to have separate water going in, separate electric, and all that other kind of fun stuff. We don't know whether logistically we can yet either, so there may be other issues that we have to work through. But yes, I mean, I'd, I'd accept that condition wholeheartedly. I have no problem with that. Okay. Uh, it is, however, not presently part of the I know that. original decision. Well, and not part of, well, no, um, no, uh, no. not part of the motion that's seconded right. on, on the table. So right. Uh, so <coughs> what we would have to do we'd is have go, to go back, back and reconsider the motion. Well, we'd have to. Add that to amend, the amend, it. amend the motion. Amend, amend the, the motion, motion as yeah. seconded as by seconded. one of the. Right. Add that condition. Mm -hmm. If everybody is uh, in favor of, of, of <coughs> that, agreeable to that condition. Uh, well, the, by now. The, the bylaw and the rationale behind the bylaw specifically did not 
impose a limitation upon what a property owner can do mm. with an accessory apartment. Uh, so we would be, should we agree, we would be adding a restriction that it was not was not included in the bylaw. In the bylaw. Right. Correct. Well, and then in the rewrite. Right. In the rewrite. Right. Uh, right. Well, within our rights, we can do that. We, well, we could do that. Um, my position on John's suggestion that we add that condition is uh, that, I, that I would not be in favor mm -hmm. of adding a condition limiting what a property owner can do with their property after we grant the special permit. Uh, I think it would be unreasonable to impose such a limitation uh, on a property owner once we've granted them the accessory permit. And I think if the rationale behind changing the amended bylaw were to limit the ability of those seeking a special, uh, special permit for an accessory apartment, to limit the use only as an in-law in apartment, then we would, we would have included that in the bylaw we yeah. And we did not, after much discussion that I think Mr. Wise was present for. Um, what what haven't you been it. present for? Uh, so, uh, if we're inclined to add it, we have a, a mechanism to add it. Uh, I would not be in favor of, of yeah. adding that restriction personally. Uh, okay, so we can have further discussion. Uh, Eric, do you, do you have anything, uh, an opinion yeah. on this in regards to uh, amending uh, side yeah. of motion? There, there seems to be, and I'm sorry for my voice, I appear to have lost it, uh, a provision indicating that the special permit is particular to that owner and that it is, you know, not necessarily transferable. Um, it would have to go back to the building inspector. So even though during the course of the applicant's ownership, he could, you know, use it without, uh, without issue to rent it out to family or to strangers, it would not necessarily transfer uh, when the house was sold later, so they would be for, before the board anyway. Mm. So, uh, <clears throat> so that seems like a reasonable safeguard that kind of balances the competing mm. issues that we're you know seeing with John and David's points. Yeah. So, m my thought would be to leave the motion alone. Um, I would be satisfied with the protection that's already afforded by the bylaws. Okay. Sorry. Uh, you know the. The petition has already indicated we have a problem with it, but still I think I tend to agree with both David and Eric. I don't think it's necessary uh, to include it in there, so I would uh, probably leave the motion out here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Personally, uh, I would agree with, the, with, with uh, David and Eric and Cy. I would leave it as <coughs> is, knowing that the bylaws have uh, recently been rewritten, and I know they spent a large amount of hours going through it, how they wanted it to read, how the town felt about it, etc. And I feel this is this is the way the the town wants the issue to be handled. Uh, this, the, you know, the way the bylaws are written, and we do, don't need to amend, uh, which is what we would be doing is amending the bylaw by putting a restriction uh, on there. So I, I would agree with that. Uh, so uh, I think you see the way it is. John, if you wanted to make a motion, and we could, uh, in regards to adding an amendment, we could certainly do that and then take a hold on it. But if you feel like... No, the board has uh, made up... Said, yeah. yeah, the board has made up its mind so. what it wants to do, so... Okay. I would uh, go through now and say, you know, I, I have uh, gone through and signed the certificate for the for the uh, Mullen and saw the previous uh, uh, night's uh, recording uh, on this and reviewed it. Uh, my personal opinion on this, and I know that was apparently the the you, know, you might say the fulcrum point that night in regards to foreign against. 
was this separate and, and uh, effort entity for an apartment. Now, I went through the uh, checklist there in item uh, 5.4.7, uh, was it in subsection 3, I think, of now. And to my way of thinking, the, the applicant has met all the criteria. I consider it a separate and distinct accessory apartment with a bath, with a kitchenette. It's got a bedroom. The bylaws don't even require to have a bedroom in there. They just say a separate, separate bath and a separate kitchen, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, it does have a bedroom in there. And to me, when they've listed the common rooms on there, that's just we know it's for an in-law apartment. There is no distinction in the bylaws between an accessory apartment, which may be rented out to a non-family member, and an in-law apartment, which is generally an apartment for a family member. And I, I don't think there is anyone that would say, you know, you, you, the family member, in-laws should not have access to the main house if they're so invited to by the by the owner of the house. Come on over for dinner. Do they have to go around the house and come in the front door? No. You know, there's an access door there. They can come in. Come on over. We'll play cards tonight. Fine. Now, and and I know your point, John. We we saying well, if he if it's rented out to somebody that's not a family family member. I would agree. He probably would wa wouldn't want a non-family member having the capability of walking through his house, whatever they felt like. Uh, and in that particular case, he's indicated that the doors had double locks on them; they could be locked on both sides. So be it. I would think if he ever thought of doing that, uh, he probably. I know if it were me, I would probably want to not even have a door there. I would want to block, block it off. Mm -hmm. And you may want to do that. Now, certainly in regards to uh, apartments on a house, whether it had a separate uh, water, a sewer service, or, or going to the house or not, I don't believe that's necessary and not required, not required by the bylaws. I think that could be worked out Certainly, you buy, you can rent units that are heated, water paid. You know, water is included in the rent, heat's included in the rent, sewer service included in the rent. Or all these could be included in the rent, so there's no need to have a separate. Uh, I think the other thing was the separate dr this driveways there, and he's already before he's come to this board has approval of the town selectmen in regards to a additional driveway to his lot to his property so that's been approved so I, I i to my personal opinion he has met all the requirements necessary for an accessory apartment in his house as written by the town bylaws so that's pretty much where i stand now and uh, we have a motion uh, is there anybody else who would like to make a comment well i uh, just yeah. Going back, uh, the accessory apartments uh, historically were meant, and still are meant, that uh, it would uh, comply with our 10% affordability and count towards the 10%, um, which we must attain. Um, now the question is, if it is not a separate unit, does it qualify um, to count towards that 10%? And my indication is the answer would be no because it's not a separate and distinct unit. Until it becomes so, it will not count towards that. So any accessory apartments that we do have down the road will probably not count towards. Yeah. And mathematically, there's no way that this town will ever reach 10%. Uh, to be honest with you, John, I can't render an opinion on that one way or the other. No, I'm not asking, I'm just throwing out. I, I'm not the town official that goes right. and counts you know, uh, what apartments, you know, how many units in this house? To my way of thinking, if I were to count that, we got Mr. and Mrs., you know, Joe Jones in this apartment, and Mr. and their son-in-law and daughter in the main house. To me, that's two families 
and this is two separate units to my way of thinking but you know i don't know how the town would look at that in regards to the meeting the 10 percent criteria well, it's or, not the town it's the state you know it's the state and yeah well the town obviously makes the count the state doesn't come out and do it i think the town it's keeps a notation of uh you know how many apartments how many affordable units they have and that, that to me would be one but I don't have you the know, answer. I'm not the official that does it either. I don't have the answer directly on that, I don't Mr. Draymond, yeah. but I, we've been looking at it a lot considering the Lincoln Street stuff and what all counts and what doesn't. The intent with the 2006, you know, town yeah. study and survey was that the in-law apartments would, or the accessory yeah. apartments would count towards that. And there are many city or Reading certified things on the list in the public state that only show one going as the addition. Yeah. My sur my surmise from that, because I haven't looked at each of the address, would be those are the accessory apartments. You're not going to build a whole new condo and make one a uh, <coughs> you know 40B. But I also know that each town has a different rule that they use mm -hmm. in that space. It would be part of the housing production plan. <coughs> so. Okay. Any further comments before we take a vote? I, I guess we we have a motion. On the on the floor, it's been seconded. We've discussed it, and I think we're ready for a vote. All those in favor of a uh, special permit for an accessory apartment uh, on the property located at 181 South Street, Reading, Massachusetts, under and, and if I would uh, on this, uh, maybe I know we said in the advertisement 5.4.7.2. I think we get two sometimes. The intent in regards to this. I would prefer to just say 5.4.7, which point is three. the whole. Now, I don't know if we have to say, if you say point point seven, been included in the Yeah, point if you say point point seven, point three yeah. is a subsection of that. That's included. 5.4.7 is accessory apartments, period. Okay. This met the criteria of all the accessory apartments, okay. period. Okay. That's, that's what I would recommend uh, on that. <coughs> and the other thing in. Question. Okay, before we take the vote, uh, Cy, and, and I had a question when I reviewed the tape, too. I know you made reference to, to me, an older plot plan. Oh. Now, you have one prepared by Meridian Associates Meridian. that's dated uh, March 25th of this year, 2015. Is there any particular... The Meridian one is a record conditions plan of land. Okay, that's a permi permit site plan of land yeah. to accompany special permit application. Right. So the official plot plan is the original one that we did. The same okay. one we did last year. Okay. This is now Just going and, and they can you remember Mr. Red, uh, Glenn had a special, he wanted to okay. make sure that all the measurements around the house sure. on the outside and all that stuff oh, okay. were recorded. So we wanted to comply with that request in the building inspector okay. and went with these well, guys to take the plot plan, make sure it was right, and then sure. do the stuff to okay. satisfy my needs. So I, uh, that's, I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, I had a question on that while we didn't. So we're still going to refer to the original plot plan right, in the architect's drawings. Sounds good. And then I just, just David, a point of, again, because we're being technical is the reason why we're here. If we're going to use Bob's suggestion that we only make reference to Five four seven. Do you need to restate your motion? Yes. Well, I, was well, I think we. Well, yeah. alternatively, yeah. we don't have to restate the motion and just I vote it. Say, vote, it of, yeah. vote it as vote it as stated. Which way do you want to do it? I, I'll defer to the chair. Voted as stated. Yeah. Make it simple as, as we can. Five point four point seven. All inclusive. All inclusive. So then you have to what's wrong? Well, we, so yeah. we'll have to we'll have to remake the motion. Now. Okay. Can I just amend the motion previously? Yeah. In, uh, I don't see why not. You said before it's five points. person who made the motion. Yeah, you're the person I would that amend, made the motion. I would amend so. the motion I previously made, making reference to sections 5.3.2, 5.4.7.2, and 5.4.7.3, and change them to, make, to refer to only sections 5.3.2 and section 5.4.7. Yeah, I, th I think that's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second, the second the amendment to the motion. No, I would let I would let the original second or second. I will second right. that, that, Mr. Chairman. 
Okay. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to get hung up on on, <laughs> right. on technical. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you for watching all the P's and Q's. <laughs> Didn't hear enough. Okay. We have we have a motion and it's been seconded and in discussed and amended and I think we're ready for a vote. All yeah. those in favor of the special permit uh, to the petitioner or for the petitioner Thomas <coughs> F. Wise for the property located 181 South Street in Reading, Massachusetts, raise your right hand. Raise your hand. All those opposed, let the record show get special permit is approved with a vote of four to one to zero with Mr. Jarima dissenting tonight. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think we have to stamp some plans for you then, because you, you probably had some original stamp plans that now are no longer valid. Yeah. All right? The plans that we stamped the stamped last on time April. has not changed. They right? haven't changed, but the date has the date, the date of the approval has changed. Date has changed. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> so I don't have the ones you stamped originally with. Sorry. Yeah. Throw those away. File them, file them appropriately. See. In a circular file? I have these ones if you want them, or you have updated, you have those ones as well. No, it's A1 through A11. Yeah, let's see, I think I have, hopefully I have them here. Is it right there? Yeah. Okay. So I have a copy here, and I should have the case file that I can change their copies to. So we'll just. Uh, Are you going to mention the reconsideration in your write-up? The what? Are you going to mention mm -hmm. the reconsideration yeah. in your? Yes, I think so we you're do. Just going to yeah. add what's going on tonight to yeah. your original draft. I think just give a should be pretty little synopsis of why yeah. we had to reconsider it and right. what happened. Yes. the decision in regards to the filing of the decision which yeah. then starts the 20 days we, we've so. recently been <laughs> you know we used to go on the premise that we had 14 days to write up the decision we've recently been advised by town council that is no he's there is no no he's okay that, uh, David, yeah. that, is, that is not that is less persuasive after a reading of 40a okay 48 does actually have a clause in it that says we have 14 days. Oh, it, it, it does. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, with any luck, however, we will always be, done be, the 14 it'll days. It'll be filed, yeah. you know, yeah. in a couple of days because size already got it written. So we've we always see. tried to get that done within two weeks of, uh, of 14 days, and then obviously then there's a 30 day appeal period on that. 20 or 30. Size has it 20. 20 days. Yeah, it, it's been pretty much written up now. Obviously, it has to be revised to include tonight. Yep. So, it. 20 days from when he gets it filed. So, knowing we get the holiday week, I would assume Cy will get it into the town clerk or over to me to for signature. If you could get it to them by right. Tuesday. I would suspect it'll be next week sometime. Right? Okay. 
let's see, town halls closed on Tomorrow Fridays. And Monday. We'll shoot for at least getting it to, to, to town hall by Thursday. I much appreciate that. Sally so says he'll probably have it ready for me to sign on Tuesday, and if it, that's the case, it'll probably be Tuesday or Wednesday before you know, I get it to town hall then. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, I know yeah. you don't have to do it that quickly. I appreciate that you are. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. At least we can do <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's see. I believe that's the only item we have on the agenda tonight. Uh, we don't have any further business. Does anybody... Have any business or anything they would like to know? No? Robert, I just realized you have the original. Do you want to stamp the original so that it shows both in the filing? Pardon? I have the original grant. Do you want to stamp the original grant as well so it shows updated or no? The original grant? He, he actually has the one. He has the ones that I stamped. Oh. in the folder. He has the ones that I stamped. Oh, he, you are the one. Or should I just circular file only? I would say it's just circular file. You, you, yeah. If okay. it's the one that's going to go into the file will don't, be today's date. Don't confuse yourself. Get rid of those. Yeah. You, you could even just keep them. Right right I know what I used to do <laughs> right on is, is put a big red mark through it, superseded. Yeah. SS. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, the only other thing, and this is not really business of the ZBA, but, uh, I will be up for reappointment this year, and I'll just let everybody know that uh, I have filled out uh, the certificate of the application uh, and submitted it to the town clerk for my consideration for reappointment. For reappointment. I think you are the one. I have two. Yeah, I just have. I have till the twenty sixth. I've done mine. So I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to re up to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unless I'm persuaded not to. <laughs> Not by us, you won't. Correct. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so uh, other than that, then I would accept a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting tonight, and uh, we'll go from there. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.